is Julie naked right now? Is Julie naked right now? Oh my god, Julie's naked. Oh my god. Mm, does it look like I'm naked? Oh my god. Well, guess what, guys? I am not. I wish I was, though. It's gonna get very hot. I had to close my window because some jabroni outside decided to cut his grass on this gorgeous day. It's gonna be very uncomfortable for everybody. That includes me. This is gonna turn into a sauna in here. Can't have, can't have any fans going. Oh, the audio, can't have any fans going. What am I talking about? What am I talking What? Oh, what did I do this week? What's new on the week of Julie? What's new in your life, everyone? Did you get a new cat? Little puss? Did you get a new little chow? This week, we're straying from the weird. I know. I'm sorry. This week, I'm going to be making just a cute little black dress. It's a nice little dress for summer. It's a nice little dress for summer because it's just spaghetti strap and cool and fits like a glove. Oh my god, what's going on back here? I got the idea for this dress from a nightgown I own. I'm I'm just completely copying the design of the nightgown because I really like it. And I want the structure of it just for a normal dress, a casual summer dress. Because it's cute. It's cute. I want this dress to be like a second layer of skin. I want it to fit like a glove. I want to appear nude while still wearing clothing. Some people want to be chefs. Some people, what are careers? Some people want to be doctors. Some people want to be lawyers. I just want to be as close to naked as I can be all the time. Life goals. All I talk about are sexual things. I mean, that's not bad. Uh, this dress is kind of like a maxi dress. What are the stipulations for a maxi dress? I feel like it's a cross between a maxi and a bodycon because it's form fitting while still being long. Let's get the show on the road. For this project, I will be using the garment that I want to clone, black rayon jersey knit fabric, a rotary cutter, one of them fine tip sharpies, and measuring tape. Plus a bunch of other stuff like pins, thread, and all that fun junk. Use a garment that you like the fit and style of. As I said earlier, I'm basically going to completely copy this garment because I really like it and want to feel comfortable AF while still being moderately stylish. <laughs> Isn't that what we all want in life? Take that there garment, fold it in half, and place the fold on the edge of your piece of paper. Then start the super riveting process of tracing it. This trace jab is easier than usual because there aren't any sleeves. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't have a big enough piece of paper to fit the length of dress, so when I reached the end of the piece, I put pins in the dress marking that line. Remember to mark your fold. I took that pin line and started the next segment from there. I marked where the slit of the dress was, thinking that I would add in a slit, but it turned out that I liked it better without one, so that mark is now there just for funsies. I'm using the folded garment to help me create a somewhat straight line. The reason I left some space at the top was to create a little flap. It's easier taping the pieces of the pattern together when there is a flap. I continued the rest of the pattern in the same fashion. And lastly, I added a half inch seam allowance, the huge. After cutting everything out, tape it together using those flippy flappies. I don't mess around with the amount of tape I use. As you can see, that is how precise I am when I'm tracing the garment. Oopsie. Tape jab done. Repeat everything but with the back of the garment. Also, remember to uh, back that ass up. Before cutting out the fabric, I placed the pattern pieces on top of one another to double check they were a similar length and shape. 
The top doesn't look like a perfect match, but as I've said in the past, it's okay if the width isn't perfect. Plus, I don't care. The bottom is definitely not even, however, with a difference that small, I will worry about it later. I think I definitely overbought for this project. I was worried that the piece of fabric wouldn't be long enough for the length of dress that I wanted, so I bought two meters when really one or probably less would have sufficed. Y'all yeah, know the drill for cutting. Place your pattern fold on the fold of your fabric and properly with the stretch of the fabric. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't find cutting this material very difficult. It laid fairly flat and didn't leave a storm of floofies. I'm using the rotary cutter because jersey knit won't fray, so pinking shears aren't necessary. Because the fabric looks almost identical on either side, I pinned a note on the right side of the piece so I wouldn't have to keep rechecking which side was what. Repeat the cutting process for the back piece once you're done with the front. I was a sleepy bunny there. You think staying up late parting is fun? Try cutting out fabric until the wee hours of the morning for a real rush. Like the original garment, I wanted to use the strap material to also finish the raw edge of the top of the garment. I measured the different lengths and added everything together. I found this easier than trying to measure the entire length accurately. The total was 66.5 inches, and then I added 2 inches on for seam allowance and as a just-in-caser, which gave me a new total of 68.5 inches. The width of the finished straps were about a quarter inch, which would mean that folded out they were originally 1 inch. I was nervous about messing the straps up and wanted a little more fabric to work with, so I doubled the width to 2 inches. Therefore, the end length of cloth I cut out for the straps was 68.5 inches by 2 inches. Guys, I'm actually going to use the iron for once. For accuracy's sake, I started by pinning the cloth in half and then ironing it. Once I had that crease, I opened it back up and folded one side in and ironed it, and then folded the other side in and ironed that. Then I folded all of that in half and ironed it one last time. Does that even make sense? I pinned the straps shut after ironing so that they wouldn't unfold as I maneuvered them. I also ironed the front and back pieces of the dress because they were pretty wrinkled. I haven't used my iron in months, but there was still water in it when I took it out of the box. It's weird that I get sick a lot. Once the iron fest was over, I pinned the front and back pieces right sides together along the sides of the dress, then sewed it up the entire length. As I said I would, I fixed the bottom of the dress when it didn't line up by cutting away the material that was out of line. The top seam wasn't perfect either, so I cut the excess away too. I did attempt to do a full explanation of where exactly to attach the straps, but I think it's best to just pay close attention to the course my finger is taking. It's really much less confusing and easier this way. I didn't realize this at first, but you'll need a separate piece of material to go across the chest. I marked out where the straps should lie at the back of the dress using the original garment, which was 4.5 inches in from the side seam on either side. Why am I like this? I left about a 3 quarter excess length to sew to the back of the dress. For the length of the actual strap itself, copying the original garment, I went with 16 inches. After 16 inches I started enclosing the raw edge between the fold of the strap material. Basically the same way you would use bias tape if you have ever done that or even know what bias tape is. It's a little awkward at first, but go slow and go nuts pinning along the way if it feels natural. I did. When I got to the back and realized the strap I had already pinned there was in the way, I put a pin further down to mark where the strap should go and removed the strap until I was done enclosing the raw edge along the back of the dress. Then repin the strap when finished with the back. <sighs> Crap on a cracker, this is difficult to explain with my mouth words. Make sure that when you are going along the side seams to sandwich the material within the fold with the seam edges open and lying flat. When I got to the end, I had plenty left for the 16 inch strap, however, not enough for the chest length. Classic. No big deal though. I measured and cut out a new piece. Make sure you hide the edges of the chest piece underneath the strap pieces that you have already put in place at the front. You also might need a pair of safety glasses if your pins decide to cannibal into the stratosphere like mine. <laughs> I'm using a zigzag stitch because this fabric is quite stretchy. I had my settings mid-range for the side seams, but decided to make my stitch smaller for the strap slash hem. However, I found that I didn't like how it looked. Luckily, I found this out midway through sewing everything in place, so I didn't have to stitch rip everything. 
It would have probably been smarter to test out both options before going balls to the wall. As always, learn from my mistakes, sweet cherubs. Sew the chest fabric down first before the rest. I did not like sewing this sandwich fabric. It wanted to move and roll all over the place. I wanted my stitch to be very close to the edge of the folded fabric, which proved to be quite difficult. My biggest tip is that even when it gets irritating and you want to pull and tug this jerk into submission, don't. The more you pull at your fabric, the more your stitch will come out wavy and bumpy. Just go insanely slow and gently move the fabric when the machine is stopped. Strap pieces on their own are overall easier to sew, but you still have to be careful to make sure that the folded material isn't sliding and getting uneven. For the back, sew the sandwich material first and then the straps after. However, I waited until after trying the dress on to sew the straps to make sure that it was a length I liked. Have y'all figured out yet that I don't really know what to call the material attaching to the top of the dress, so I'm just calling it the sandwich material? There's probably a proper term for it, but why should I start pretending now like I know what I'm talking about? I tried the dress on and found that it was very baggy on top. I tried it on earlier before sewing on the straps, but thought the looseness might look cute. However, I was wrong. It's kind of annoying because it means that I either stitch all of the sandwich material off or get over it and just have a thicker side seam. Always pin the amount you want to take in when the garment is on. You can get a friend to help you instead of awkwardly doing it yourself. I'm a friendless savage though. Half kidding. Because I wanted this to be very form-fitting, I pinned all the way down my sides so that I had an accurate amount to take in. Aw, thanks deodorant. I measured how much I had taken in at each pin and then measured how far down each pin was from the top so I could draw a clean and accurate line on both sides. After sewing that, she fit a real nice. This shot sucks, but because I didn't get closer to the edge of the fold, the fabric is folding over stupidly when I put it on. I'm going to try gluing it down instead of stitch ripping and re-sewing because basically this fabric is really annoying to stitch rip. I did a couple of stitches when I sewed the straps on. I did one near the top of the edge of the dress itself, and then another one a few centimeters down from that because I didn't want those B words coming off. I also ended up shortening the straps by one inch. I over glued, so I freaking stitch ripped it and sewed it again, getting closer to the folded edge and also covering up the glue residue. I cut away the excess fabric from the sides where I took it in and the straps. I left them long here, but cut away more later. I don't remember what was going through my head at this point. Because of the sandwich job on top, we only have to hem the bottom for this garment. Yay. As I said before, this fabric won't fray, so I folded the fabric over only once and did a one inch hem. I actually ironed down the hem this time and found that it really did help when I sewed it, so I guess maybe in the future I'll keep doing that. I guess. Guys, we done. I did it. Guys, I know my reveal isn't as perfect as last week. But you can't have a dunny chasing you every week. Wait, I want to look more naked than that. Just right, oh yeah. Oh, that's very naked. Okay. <laughs> so you know what you get? You get some awkward dancing. You get me being an idiot. You get stupid faces. <laughs> and a display of the garment. So how did you feel about the end product? How did you feel about the end product? Do you, do you like my dress? Naked, not naked, naked, not naked, naked, not naked. I very much enjoyed the end result, I enjoyed the dress. Um, overall, it was actually a pretty easy make. Straps were the hardest part, but not that hard. Froons and Foomly, 
If you like my videos, please subscribe. I want to, I guess, apologize, explain, mention why my social media is so quiet. One, I hate doing it. Two, I hate doing it. Three, I hate doing it. Like I like making videos, but that doesn't mean I have to post every little thing I do on social media. Oh, I dropped a deuce this morning. Oh, I worked out so much yesterday that I basically took a shower with my own sweat. What was I talking about? <laughs> what was the point? With that being said, still follow me. <laughs> I'm on Facebook and Instagram. Please add. This is my boo-boo. This is also my boo-boo. Sometimes you're making videos and as you're making them, you're like, what content do I have? I have nothing. I've just rambled for the last 15 minutes. But then you're like, editing. People have asked me if I edit my own videos. Of course I do. What other person would have the patience to sift through all this crap and find the like five frames of good footage? De you know, decent footage. Okay, footage. Give this video a fat, meaty, thick thumbs up. Thank you. Okay, gigs. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.